What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Uncommon Sense. Welcome back Uncommon Sense fam. We come at you today with another fragrance review. One that's recently been discontinued. So I figured I better get on here and make this happen. We're about to hop right into this thing. Let's go. Every single day. fragrance house that I'm talking about is Tom Ford. Tom Ford is one of my favorite fragrance houses as well as one of my favorite designers. It's actually one of my favorites from the line. The fragrance we're discussing today, Tom Ford's Grey Vetiver Eau de Toilette Concentration. The Eau de Toilette Concentration debuted back in spring of 2014. A couple of years after the Eau de Parfum Concentration was released and slated to be a more sparkling, sharper citrus-based version of the Eau de Parfum. The category for Tom Ford's Grey Vetiver is a citrus woody aromatic. The nose behind Tom Ford's Grey Vetiver is Harry Fremont. Now for the note breakdown in the top, we have winter lemon, grapefruit, orange blossom, and bergamot. In the mid, we have Thai basil and orris root. In the base, we have vetiver, Amberwood, oak moss, and musk. I'm actually going to go for a little spritz on the skin. In the air, it doesn't do it any justice, so I got to get this on my skin. It smells so classy and esteemed. The detectable notes to me are going to be that citrus up front, probably the orange blossom mostly, that vetiver in the background, and it's something suede about this one. It's something fuzzy at the same time. And that must be that oak moss accord. You can kind of smell that one in this one. There's a smooth, cool collectiveness about this fragrance that I really enjoy. The citrus and the vetiver, they mingle very well together. And I will say this, upon smelling the Eau de Toilette concentration, by comparison to the Eau de Parfum concentration, this one does have that slightly more fizzy, sparkling vibe. That Eau de Parfum concentration, in my experience, does not. The Eau de Parfum concentration is just a little bit more to the point. Probably one of the very few frag heads or fragrance enthusiasts that prefers the Eau de Toilette concentration over the Eau de Parfum concentration. My first peak performance, this one really kicks ass on my skin. It hangs around roughly for about seven hours. As an Eau de Toilette, that's actually really good in my experience because most Eau de Toilettes tend to fade a little faster than of course the Eau de Parfums. But this one really sticks around and hangs onto my skin. And I really appreciate that because I don't get tired of this scent. I rate this one a nine. For my second P projection, it projects solidly at a roughly about the two foot radius without being overly obnoxious and hey, look at me, here I am. So I really feel like this is one of those scents that is very classy and refined, but still prompts you to take notice to kind of stand up there like, yeah, I'm here. Get into it. Check me out. You can wear it in a myriad of situations. I've dressed this one up. I've dressed it down. And I really feel like it doesn't have a limit. So I actually like the fact that you can wear this fragrance a little bit more than in one place. So when I originally thought about this fragrance, I kind of thought about it as a more dressed up blazer, tie, maybe something of an interview scent or a professional meeting something that will be more geared for professional settings. However, I really believe that this one has a versatile appeal where you can wear it in a variety of different situations. So for my second P projection, it projects solidly at about one and a half to two feet with six sprays, two on the opposite sides of the neck, two around the pit of the throat area, and two at the back of the neck for some sillage. And I rate that a nine on the second P, which is projection. For the third P, play. I got two compliments when I wore it hanging with some friends. So for my third P, play. I rated this one a 10. Just for the simple fact that I really enjoy this fragrance and it's consistent with the compliment factor. So I, you kind of know that feed, by that feedback when it's unsolicited that you are doing something right. This is one that I would enjoy regardless of any compliments. If I never got a compliment or I got negative feedback saying, Ooh, I don't like that, that stink. 
Even if I got that type of feedback, I would still keep this one. I would still wear it for the fact of how it makes me feel. It makes me feel like an esteemed gentleman, one. And then it has that real grown man dapper thing that I really enjoy. These types of scents solidify my presence as a more mature gentleman whose tastes have started to refine and balance out and become more sophisticated. And for that third P play, I rate this one a 10. Now for my fourth P, price. I'm gonna rate this one a 10. I got this one at an insane price point. I got a 1.7 fluid ounce, 50 milliliter bottle of Tom Ford Grey Vetiver Eau de Toilette for $45. I rated a 10. I know that was a steal because I've gotten certain fragrances at a cheaper price and I've seen this one started to go for $85 to $90 for the Eau de Toilette concentration. Now for the fifth P, presentation. I really feel like this one is very clean, streamlined. It's an elegance to it. Even the box is very to the point. Not a whole lot of frills. Same with the bottle. Not a whole lot of frills. It reminds me of a flask in such a way. My dad used to have a flask that kind of looks like this with the ridges where the metal was, was kind of sunk into the glass and the glass ridge is kind of pushed out from the metal. I'm a sucker for a metal cap and I felt like to really give this one that upper echelon appeal, if this was a metal cap or was a little heavier, I would like the cap on this one a little bit better. But I very much enjoy that placard on the front. So for my fifth P presentation, since it is very clean, elegant, streamlined, I rated Tom Ford's Great Vetiver Eau de Toilette an eight. Now for my sixth P, place. The place to wear this could chiefly be an office type of setting, a rendezvous with friends, a little bit more formal. It doesn't have to be in terms of a business suit, but this one to me, I wouldn't wear this to the club. I wouldn't wear this on a date per se. I would wear this in more of either a formal gathering where, not where I'm dressed formal, but something that is indeed formal. Like, I know I'm going to a gathering with friends or dinner or something like that, or hanging with family, or to the office, or to a business meeting or an interview. Now, for the age-old question, is this one a cop or drop? I think you guys are smart enough to know me and how I present in such a way that this is indeed a cop. If you don't have a vetiver scent in your collection that is reminiscent of this, I feel like you should do yourself a service and at least grab one. But the experience with this one is game changing. Now for story time. I got wind of this one through my scent box subscription. I saw it was available on uh for the available fragrances in my calendar and I threw this one in my cart and when it came, I when I first smelled it, I wasn't blown away. But as I wore it more, I started to really become entranced with the way that the fragrance set on my skin. On my skin, this one smells like a bespoke suit. It really fits my aesthetic and my vibe. The experience with this fragrance is so great because of the way it kind of boosts my mood. Um, it, has, it has an elevation to it that kind of, once you spray it on, and get into it, it kind of just makes you kind of stand up straight and, you know, have your posture together and present chest out, stomach in. And that type of confidence and those mood boosters, that type of thing translates. So when you show up in the world as, you know, standing straight up, feeling good, chest puffed out, other individuals take notes of that. It's, it's in your psyche and it's in your being and it's in your energy. This one did make my top 10 for men's spring 2020 list. What's also interesting about this fragrance to me is just how tastes are influenced because my dad's favorite fragrance is gray flannel. It's funny that this one, gray vetiver, is one of my favorites. So big ups to dad. Dad probably had some impartation and influence in my fragrance journey because my father was a frag head thanks to probably my mom because she kept him like on with the most up-to-date fragrances and the things that smell great. My mother is a beauty kind with my mom being a cosmetologist, cosmetology instructor, an avid beauty connoisseur, the individual she came in contact with, chiefly her family, reap that type of benefit or that type of education. She would often suggest different fragrances and colognes to my father and he would go through them and figure out the ones that he liked and the ones he didn't like. Of his noted collection, I remember Karl Lagerfeld that used to come in the gold bottle. I remember Halston's. I remember gray flannel 
was one of his favorites. I remember Pierre Cardin being one of his favorites. And I can't remember what this, he had this other fragrance that looked like a chemistry set. And like it was orange on the bottom and it was green at the top. And when you turn them and mix them, the fragrance starts to like blend in. I cannot remember what that fragrance is. He loved the Versace line, like the Versace blue jeans, green jeans, black jeans. He had like several of those. So when I was growing up, kind of sneak in and steal a few of his colognes before I kind of grew up and developed my own taste. We're a fragrance family between my mom, my sister, my brother, and and my dad. It's kind of no surprise that here I am with you guys telling you about my fragrance journey and my favorite fragrances. So I really appreciate you guys for stopping by viewing this video. And earlier, like I said, leave me a comment. Let me know what your experience with Tom Ford's Great Vetiver Eau de Toilette and other vetiver based fragrances, what you think are comparable scents. Leave me a like if you enjoyed this video and definitely if you enjoy the content that I'm putting out, make sure that you subscribe so that you can always be abreast of the happenings over here at Uncommon Sense.